composing bass lines. Today you're going to get a few tips on how to cut out the downtime and be more effective at composing your bass lines. And we're going to dive right into it today to get you started on creating those great bass lines. But there is a lot to know. There's a lot to go into composing your bass lines and the process of creating your bass lines. But as you get this process down, um, it seems at first it seems a little timely but it will, after over and over repetition, constant repetition, it will become second nature and it becomes more, you know, less timely and it just, it's just more effective. You don't even have to think twice about it. It just happens. Okay, so definitely the process at first, as in anything you do, at first it takes a while to get it down. It takes a little time, but you gotta take your time. Just like learning scales, you gotta take them slow in order to pick up and be more effective in your bait and your scales okay so anything just take your time at first and this process is timely so you will get it though okay and if you're new here subscribe because I've got a series of this going on there's going to be there's a lot of information here to that goes into composing your bass lines I couldn't put on it to be hours long of a video so we're going to just go in and make several different videos of this so definitely if you're new here subscribe Hit that bell notification, get in the loop, and don't miss a beat. All right. And hello, I'm Donald with the bass instructor of the How to Play Bass online course at IWantToPlayBass.com. Jump over there, get your 21 day free bass practice ritual, and get well on your way to building great habit. The first scenario we have here is going to be chord charts. Pretend you're going into a session, you know, your bassist that called you up and they want you to come in and lay down this bass line for this song that somebody's put together. So you walk in there and they hand you a chord chart. And if you don't know what a chord chart is, this is a chord chart right here. Right here. So hopefully you can see that the light's not too bright. But it's this is your chord chart. It gives you almost everything and hopefully the chord chart they give you has as much information as the fake books do. And this is the Jazz Real Book. And it tells you what kind of feel you're going for there. This one's actually a um, it's an even eight straight eighth notes feel so it tells you that right there and you know then you've got your chords at the top now hopefully they've got a little melody here that you can see at least get an idea of the melody or you'll get to play through it a couple times I'll let you hear what's going on and then you have the option of how to come up with the bass line if they haven't dictated on how they want that bass line but for the first part the first way so you check out that chord chart you look through it see if you see anything unusual you've got um and it gives you the chords up there now this being a jazz real book we've got um g major seven we got four part chords in there we've got seven chords in there but you'll look up top you'll see a g major and um there's not a lot of chords in there. g major and we got b flat down here b flat d just a d triad and then d over c c is the bass so there's things there's a lot to know about that as well but if you're handed that um you just know to look at it and the first and if you're beginning at this is this your new gig and the safest thing to do is to play the root notes okay so then you get a feel you can feel the structure of that song as you play through it you can feel the chord progression a lot better when you're just going to play the root notes i laid down a little chord progression here it's in the key of c it's d minor g major c major and f major okay so it's a little chord progression there and the first way I get through it is just playing the root. You'll hear me just playing the root. And another tip in here to be to take into account is the bass drum. Listen to the bass drum as well. And listen, see how the bass line follows that bass drum. Because you've got rhythms. You've got only 12 notes on this bass. 12 different notes on this bass. So it's pretty amazing how many different phrases you can come up with that there's billions of phrases um, rhythms and everything that you can come up with there's so many options here so don't think that it's all been done before because it hasn't it hasn't been done before and it won't be done before there's so many ways to dynamic so much that goes in to composing a bass line or composing a piece of music or an arrangement or anything that it's all unique to you the first tip here is to play the root notes and get the groove of the follow the bass drum and that's what I've done here so give it a listen and I'll be back and we'll talk about that so 
So hope you saw how that worked. It was just D, just playing a D with bass drum, G, C, and F, just the roots, okay? Now the next step is you can play, you can add a little color to it depending on the song. If they really need you to lay back, um, the composer or whoever wrote it wants you to lay back and just play those roots, then you do that. That's what you do, that's your job, just lay down those roots. But another option to add a little harmony to it is to add the fifth. Now, if you're playing country music, which I've done a lot of videos on, this fifth is perfect. And you can, you know, it adds a lot of color to it. But there's ways of adding that fifth. You know, just because you're adding a fifth does not necessarily mean you're playing a country tune. The feel, like I said, like I've mentioned in other videos, I mean, rock and roll, they, they use that root fifth octave thing all day long. And country music does it as well. So it's it's there and you know it can be used in any genre blues reggae anything but it's there but the root and the fifth is right there so you want to play the root and you've got the fifth right there the fifth is the five say say where this chord progression is showing the d major so we've got i'm sorry d minor so we've got d f the um D, F, and the fifth is going to be A, okay? One, two, three, four, five, okay? So you've got the D and the A. Use those two notes. And you'll see that in this video, how I've, in this song, how I've done um, the same progression. You'll see in this example how I've used the fifth and the root on each one of these chord progressions. I'm still playing the root, I'm still playing that chord progression. D minor, G major, C major. And F major, but I'm adding a fifth in there to give it a little color, a little more something, a little more desiring, a little more um, fulfilling. So check that out, and we'll be back. So number three is I've taken that root fifth and I've added the octave. You know, just add that octave and that adds even more color to it. So you can do a little more. Your bass line is getting a little busier now and not necessarily needed. They might not want a busy bass line at all. So, you know, so give this one a listen. So far we've got, you know, we're using the root, we're adding the fifth, and now we're adding the fifth and the octave. We're getting a little busier. Now we're going to add, we're going to target some more chord tones of that. So what becomes very important now is that you know the notes of these chords that you're playing. Like in a D minor, you need to know that D, F, A are in a D minor chord. Those notes are in a D minor chord. So that's when music theory comes into play. And, you know, like I said, there's a lot that goes into composing a bass line. So you, your music theory, your knowledge needs to be up there to an extent. But like I said, if you're playing the root and the fifth, you can get away with it. But they might want a little more color or they've called you in there because of what you know and how you can choose certain notes over these chord progressions that help, uh, help you know, enhance that song, that arrangement that they're working on. So that's where you need to know this one here, and this is the chords, the notes of your chord, the chord tones of that chord. And D, D minor chord has D, F, and A in it. So we're going to target the D, the F, and the A. And then we're going to, once we target those, it'll bring us back, it'll take us to the next chord, which is G major, and then we know a G major chord as G, B, and D. You know the first third and the fifth okay so if you don't know the chords here's a little tip on how to get those chords get those chord tones down an easier way is to think of it as the one three and five okay so you you see that chord is a G major so G major tells you something major scale okay just go to just play a major scale it's one of the first scales we usually learn 
So hopefully you know that. And if um, if you don't, then check back. I'll leave some videos here that talk about the, the major scale as well. So pretend we know the G major scale. We know that we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different notes in that scale. Okay. So when we see a G major chord, we it will always be the one of that scale, the first note of that scale, the third note of that scale, or third degree of that scale, and the fifth degree of that scale. And it's always that way. Anytime you see a G major, C major, any major chord, any minor chord, it's always the one, three, and five of that scale. Okay? So that's one way. That's an easy way to remember it. So definitely, you know, practice that, but memorize these things. Memorize these. When you see an F major chord, you know F, A, and C is what you're going for. C, E, and G, C major. So, and D minor, D major is D, F sharp, and A, but D minor, that third is not a major third, it's a minor third. That's what makes it minor. So you've got D, F, and A, okay? So we target those notes. So you see the D minor? Like I said, we got D, F, and A. And then we go to G major, we've got G, and now you don't have to play G, B, D in that order. You can play, as long as you play those notes in there, which certain notes in a chord progression, this is why the chord progression moves so well amongst itself, because of these chord tones. And this one, when we go to the G, we go G, B, we go G, D, and then we go B, and then the B is a half step above C, so it leads us right into the C, okay? So that's how that works out as well, and you know, that's that's why I say this process is, is kind of timely, but after you do it enough, it becomes, you just naturally know that that's gonna be going right to that C, and you can look ahead, you cannot think about where you're at right now, you can actually be looking ahead to where, you, where you're going, not, you don't want to focus right in the moment. If you're on beat one and you're looking at beat one, you're almost going to be be behind. So you'll be looking ahead and you'll be able to do that when you when you get this down. So then we've got the C, E, and G, and then we've got F, E, and G. So listen to this one. This is how I use these um, chord tones and I target these chord tones. And listen to this. There's 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 one way. I'm going to go right into it with the groove using those chord tones, and then I'm going to go into it like a walking bass line using those chord tones also. So give it a listen and this is going to walk you out and hope you got some value out of this. If you did, help me help you hit that like button and I'll catch y'all on the flip flop in the next video. So bye for now.